Hello everyone and welcome to This is Africa, and here's Mali. Now let's have a look, shall we? Africa's eighth biggest nation. Mali is very hot and very flat and very much enlivened by the river Niger, in whose company the land is more cheerfully green. Unsurprisingly, it was in the fertile proximity of these waters that Mali's cities were first constructed. Jene Jeno was settled around the 200 BC mark and flourished for many centuries. Here are some terracotta figures produced by its artists. Now in the 1200s, a man named Sunjata Keita established what would become known as the Mali Empire, and while his own religion is uncertain, over time Islam became the realm's official faith. The Mali Empire garnered immense wealth through trade and taxation, and cities like Timbuktu became prominent centers of learning and scholarship. Yes, the fabled faraway place was and is real, and was enriched by a vivid and distinctive adobe style of architecture. The Mali Empire attained its apex of richness and power under the famous Mansa Musa. Though it is not possible to accurately determine the extent of his personal finances, Musa is today regarded as having been one of the wealthiest individuals ever to exist, some believing him to have been the richest of all. He himself certainly seemed to believe so, and on his pilgrimage to Mecca in the 1320s, his entourage included tens of thousands of attendants, servants and slaves, bearing gold and silk, an immense extravagant display of opulent excess. His generous dishing out of gold to the crowds that mobbed his retinue actually devalued that precious commodity, causing inflation in the cities he passed through. Then, as all things do, it ended. The the Mali Empire began to decline and ended up supplanted by the Songhai Empire. The city of Gao was the capital, but Jene and Timbuktu continued to be important scholastic centers. The greatest of Songhai's leaders was Askia the Great. I mean, Askia anyone. Then bickering and political infighting nibbled and gnawed away its stability, and it too declined, and in 1591 it ended up conquered by the invading Moroccans. Unhappy years followed, and we find Mali in the 19th century ridden with rival states declaring jihads, religious wars, against each other. Then the French arrived and took over, and added it to their enormous colonial possessions in Africa. In these years Mali was known as French Sudan, and Bamako became the capital which it still is. Naturally there was native resentment at foreign rule, but one good thing France did was end slavery in the region. Anyway, Mali gained its independence in 1960. The first president was overthrown in a coup after failing to improve the economy. Moussa Traoré led the nation for over 20 years, but again was unsuccessful in fixing things, and in 1991 he himself was toppled in a coup. In 2012 there was another coup, then there was another coup, then there was another coup. Any more coups and the nation will sound like a giant pigeon. But seriously, none of this has been helping Mali, which has long been riddled with violence and poverty. Ironic for a land with gold as its main export. Mali today has a low level of human development, and it's clear that a lot of work and patience will be needed to get things going better, and we hope they do get better. And so good luck to Mali, but as for me, it's bye for now. Bye bye <laughs>